don't like making Last of Us 2 videos, but I do feel a certain obligation to act as a voice of reason in these insane times. Now, you are probably heard the news that there's a Last of Us 2 remaster in the works. There's no way that this is true. But gaming news websites, once again, marched lockstep in reporting on it. Now, I'll get into why this isn't true, but just a word on these websites quickly first. This is the shoddiest journalism I've ever seen, which is saying something for the gaming press. All of these websites are fueled by clickbait, and they'll publish just about anything to get your eyeballs on their ads. To say that they're bending the truth here would be very generous. The entire story is based on a single source, what some guy wrote on his LinkedIn page, which is pretty flimsy, and everyone is running away with the story like it's 100% real, despite the studio not making any statements, no real official word, they just ran the story anyway. Well, to be very blunt, it's not a real story. And I really got to call out the editors of these websites because anyone with any sense would never have greenlit the story. The news business used to be based on trust. The journalist had an obligation to report the truth, good or bad, and play it straight. And if they didn't, they paid with their reputation. Unfortunately, standards have completely gone out the window and you can just publish rumors. <sighs> Modern game journalism is a free-for-all of yellow journalism. Anything that'll get you clicks becomes a story and clogs up our news feeds like McDonald's will your arteries. The entire narrative around Naughty Dog and The Last of Us is utterly warped with gaming blogs simping nonstop for a dead franchise and a dying studio. But since I've got an actual journalism degree and nearly a decade of experience as a reporter, I'm going to actually do the due diligence these propaganda mills failed to. So here are six reasons why The Last of Us 2 remaster isn't real. Reason number one, the source. The source is an outsourcing artist at Naughty Dog named Mark Paragillo. Oh, hi, Mark. Paragillo on his LinkedIn listed among his credits, responsible for overseeing the production of all outsourced environment, art assets, weapons, and interactive props for two iconic titles, The Last of Us Part 1 and The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. Paragillo has since removed mention of a part two remaster from his LinkedIn, no doubt due to all the attention that the story is getting. He has not issued any statements and it's a weekend, so I'm not about to bug him for a comment. It's, he's probably under heavy NDA anyhow. Right off the bat, I'll point out the obvious. LinkedIn is the place where you go to embellish your resume. If you're a barista in real life, you're a beverage delivery manager on LinkedIn. It's also very possible that this was just a typo. Go reread your own resume sometime, and you'll be surprised to find that your current city listed is the college you attended. Whoops. Reason number two. The recent news that Naughty Dog's monetization engineer, Andres Howard, has left the company after just 11 months. This should be as clear as a bell that Factions 2, which Howard was clearly working on, is as dead as Neil Druckmann's credibility. Howard is also not a nobody. He designed Fortnite's monetization and is a seven-year veteran of Epic Games. His only other role as short as this one is a 10-month stint he had at Ubisoft, a studio that's deeply embroiled in their own problems, so no big surprise he jumped ship. Maybe the guy is just job hopping, and who knows. But what we can say for sure is that such a high-profile departure does not bode well for Factions 2, or Naughty Dog. Not to mention that Naughty Dog Vice President Evan Wells called it quits from the studio back in July after 25 years with the studio. This is not something you do if things are just dandy. And Wells is not an old guy. He went to college in the mid 90s, so it's not like he's riding off to Boca to chill on the beach till the Grim Reaper comes calling. Things are very obviously going quite badly for Naughty Dog. Reason number three, the recent layoffs. Naughty Dog recently announced that they'd be letting some people go. This is par for the course lately with a mass layoff, just about it happening everywhere in the industry these days. Naughty Dog says it's just QA testers they've been letting go, contractors, no less. But they wouldn't bother to announce this if it were true. This is an obvious cover for real trouble at the studio. Now, if you're not familiar with contracting in the video game industry, if you're a contractor, you're at the bottom of the food chain. Contractors getting let go is an event more common than sunrises, so something clearly stinks about this story. 
They wouldn't bother to say we're letting contractors go. They just let them go. There's also the fact that everyone let go is under a non-disclosure agreement and can't talk about the layoffs. Hmm. I'd also like to point out that places like Santa Monica Studio, makers of God of War, haven't had layoffs. Or Sucker Punch, makers of Ghost of Tsushima. Really gets the old noggin jogging. Number four, and this is the most obvious reason, the dismal sales of Last of Us Part Two. Last of Us Part Two is one of the biggest financial failures in gaming history, losing up to $120 million, likely more. I have two other videos going into detail explaining exactly how this happened, so if you're curious, you can go check those out. The idea that Sony or even Naughty Dog would draw more attention to their greatest failure would be the very last thing that either of them would do at this point. Their fortunes are clearly flagging, the studio is rudderless, and Neil Druckmann, who I think is a complete hack, is now running the show. That's right, the guy who created this. My is now in charge of the studio. What could possibly go wrong? Reason number five, the studio's obvious desperation. Now I could go either way with this one. Maybe they are insane enough to jump right back into the controversy of part two and dredge up all the negativity again. None of us forget, though, how they gaslighted us. And pro tip, calling your fans bigots because they don't like your lame-ass revenge story isn't a great idea. Neither is never apologizing for all of your bullshit. DMCA takedowns on YouTubers you don't like, straight up lying to fans about Joel being in the game, swapping him in trailers where he's not even in that part of the game, and perhaps worst of all, retconning part one to make it a vehicle to stroke your own ego. Neil Druckmann's sins are many, but boy, is he paying for them now. I'm sure you guys saw that there's a Last of Us 2 themed haunted house at Universal Studios. At the risk of belaboring the point, you do not license out your high art zombie franchise as a goddamn haunted house if you're sitting pretty. That's like Christopher Nolan deciding to direct a Taco Bell commercial. Though, I wouldn't mind seeing Christian Bale yell Chalupa at the top of his lungs while driving the Batmobile. And finally, point number six, a major first party studio that hasn't put out a game in three years. That's utterly insane when you think about it. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Sony needs their studios making high quality story driven games as fast as possible. It's why people buy PS5. Well, besides Call of Duty, but since forever, the console war has boiled down to what exclusives can draw new gamers into their camp and keep them there. To go this long without releasing something is a very telltale sign of trouble. High profile departures is another. Canceling projects is another. Remastering a game that's already been remastered is yet another. And so, dear listeners, the odds of a Last of Us 2 remaster coming anytime soon is as likely as Jimmy Hoffa's body being discovered on the moon. Is it impossible? No, not technically. But about as likely as an Arctic cyclone kicking up in the depths of hell. I'll leave you with one final thing to consider. Sony calls the shots. If they thought part two was even worth an extra dime, don't you think they would have done something, anything with it by now? It took them three years to make a decision. Sure, it looks like that utter stinker of a game is about to hit PlayStation Plus, finally. But even I find that to be a risky move. From a business perspective, the best thing to do would be to pretend that Last of Us 2 just doesn't exist. Not only is it not a good game, but the ugly controversy, which you can thank Neil Druckmann for creating, is pure PR poison for your game sales and console sales. You couldn't spin Last of Us Part 2 with a military-grade centrifuge. It's why they never use Part 2 in any of their marketing. It's been banished to the Shadow Realm, and rightly so. The only people cheerleading it are a bunch of, you know, quite frankly, delusional people and video game websites simping for clicks. And for all you stands who made it this far in the video, riddle me this. If Last of Us Part 2 is as big of a success as you claim, huge financial success, I've heard people tell me that it made $500 million, uh, and then of course they never post any sources or evidence for that claim. But if it was so successful, 
then why did God of War Ragnarok sell 11 million copies in three months? It took Last of Us 2 three years to sell just 10 million. Oh, and 6 million of those were at ma a massive discount, bargain bin prices. Can you, can you please explain that? Can somebody, can somebody explain it, please? In closing, a parting word to the editors and writers of these websites desperately trying to prop up Naughty Dog. If you had any integrity at all, you wouldn't publish rumors. But like I've said before, and I'll say now, you're either corrupt or you want to cash in from clicks from the very small number of people who think the, well, this Last of Us fan fiction is anything but a pile of digital diarrhea. Thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please be sure to like and subscribe as those things are a huge help and will help the channel. And be sure to read the comments in this video to see the astounding feats of mental gymnastics by Last of Us 2 stands. Until next time, game on.